All right, using my little um, GoPro like camera. It's a, what was it, the DJI Osmo Action. It's the uh, original version. There's a newer version. Maybe a couple new versions. Anyway, this is the Aaron's Razor. You can see down here. Um, hold on a second, I'll give you the model number. There's two different model numbers. I think the 911602 is the model number from Lowe's, you know, the hardware store. And then 003981, 003981 is the um, model number from Aaron's, if you look it up on their website. Uh, it's a rear wheel drive, self-propelled mower. Um, does bag so they're gonna have the bagger removed and it mulches it has a mulch plug which I don't have in there right now and uh, let's see they say you can rear discharge so I'm just gonna talk about a few things here before I forget <laughs> this is not factory <laughs> I'll explain that in a minute um, they say it can rear discharge because you can see on the side there you know there's no way to get it out of the side like some of the older traditional mowers which, so this is good for trimming around flower beds and so on because you're not going to get um, grass thrown up into the flower beds. But the thing is about this, you know, it looks like it's closed and there, there would be no way to discharge. But it is open under here a little bit. But the problem is everything gets thrown over here to the left when it's, when it's cutting with this down. And this is the position that you would use for rear discharge with the mulch plug removed. So you can see it's, the mulch plug is removed there. Um, I even tried holding it up like about this level with the, the spongy cord here. Uh, so that's what that was for, but it still doesn't work well. What happens is when it's closed, all the grass kind of gets thrown over to the side and it just kind of clump, clumps up and gets um, stopped up in there. And if you have it out like this, um, actually it also, It'll throw it up here a little bit too. So it somehow, you know, gets out of there. Um, or maybe it was when I had it like this, I don't remember. But um, if you have it lifted open a little bit, my idea was I could just prop it open a little bit and then have it come, you know, down here. Yeah, but that still doesn't work because it wants to throw it all over to the side, this left side, and uh, it just doesn't work. Um, it makes a mess, leaves clumps, and um, so in my opinion, you can't really rear discharge with it. So you're either going to be bagging or mulching. And speaking of the bag, the bag is vented on this side. So if it's on the mower, the top right is vented. You can see my hand in there. But you can't see it really over here. This is blocked off. So this is not vented. The right side on the top, right side on the side, and the right rear is all vented. And um, the, the whole left side is not vented. And of course the bottom is just plastic, hard, you know, kind of a harder piece of plastic, which is good because that's gonna rub on the ground a little bit. Um, but this holds quite a bit. And I've got an old Troy built uh, walk behind self-propelled mower. It's front wheel drive. I've had it for probably almost 20 years. I also got that from Lowe's. And it still works fine, but you know, the front wheel drive just doesn't work as well. On the, hill, on the hills here, I've had, you can see the, I have hills. Um, so this is better for the hills and it's just better in general. The deck is a little bit deeper, so it's good for cutting um, thicker grass, wet grass. You know, it just doesn't get all clumped up and stuck inside. We'll look under there in just a minute. Um, and I'll just tell you right now about the, the cutting and the bagging. I cut yesterday after it rained and the grass was still soaking wet. I mean, it was it was literally wet, not just, you know, moist or damp. It was, it had raindrops on it. Um, and it totally filled up that bag, uh, no problem. It didn't clog up at all. Uh, it left a really nice cut. And, um, and it, it just, you know, I was surprised how well it filled up the bag without clogging or anything like that. And um, when I took the bag off, it was really heavy. So it did a really good job with that. Um, again, this bungee cord doesn't belong there. This is something I put on there to test that. Um, this rod here, you'll have to hold that back to start it. Uh, if you let go of it, it'll stop the engine. And um, 
So you pull that back and then of course pull the, the starter cord there. Um, this engine is a Briggs, Briggs and Stratton. I think the 163cc. I'm trying to make sure there's no reflections on there. Um, it says 7.25 foot pounds, but it supposedly rated higher than that if you look at Briggs and Stratton's website. So I'm not sure why it says 7.25, but it, you notice the silly comment right here no oil change. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, it holds 0.8 quarts of oil. Uh, they give you exactly the amount of oil you need uh, to fill it up when you buy it new, uh, which is um, it's a th just a straight 30 weight oil, and that's what they recommend in it, but you can obviously run 10W30 in it, um, which is probably what I'll be doing. Um, nice air filter here on the side, easy to get to, just a little snap off on the top, and um, that just pulls right off, and this just kind of seats into the bottom there. And it just snaps back on. Of course, you don't want to leave this out in rain; that you'll get water down in there on the filter and everything else. Um, fuel. This I think it holds one liter, is what it said. Um, and I swear, this thing so far, I'm really impressed with the fuel usage. Um, it, it just sips the fuel. Uh, I, I filled up at least two bags of wet grass um, bagging, and you know, on the hills and stuff here, and it just barely. I could hardly see any fuel used at all so uh, that old Troy boat that I have and again it's older it's probably almost 20 years old uh, but that thing goes through gas pretty quick and I don't think the fuel tank is as big uh, but this takes about a liter um, so the carburetor there I don't see any fuel filter or anything like that it's overhead valve and uh, heat shield on the exhaust there. This is the oil fill here. It has a dipstick on it. Again that takes about, I believe it's, check the manual, but I believe it was 0.8 quarts. Alright, so you have to hold this back to start it and once it's running, um, if you let that go it'll stop obviously. Um, there's no choke or anything. It, it's a really nice just pull start you know it's self-choking and I don't know exactly how it's set up but um, no choking or priming needed uh, my old mower does have a little prime bulb on it uh, it doesn't have a choke but um, you do have to prime it but this one you don't you just give it one good tug and it usually starts right up uh, of course this is the, um, the slider here for the the drive um, what that's doing right here you'll see this rod under here cable connected to it so when you push down on it you know that um, pulls on that cable these things this particular type of setup in general uh, there's other you know Toro some other companies use use that where you uh, press down on the handle it on the hills and so on it can be a little jumpy you just have to get your technique down um, you know because you have to raise it up a little bit and spin it around you know to change directions and uh, if you're on a hill you know you might be putting some pressure on there and it want to take off on you so you just have to kind of watch out on that but um, yeah, just looking at the wheels here real quick just need to look underneath wheels are nice thick wheels and they're completely plastic um, but they do seem built pretty well I don't know if that's going to show up it's kind of dark this whole piece in the front is plastic but you know it seems sturdy enough there's a rod that goes through there for um, adjusting the height and uh, you know it's connects both wheels together uh, so anyway here's the blade I guess there's a pulley on the crank shaft coming out of there it goes back you know a belt goes around it and it goes back to drive the rear wheels so that's what it looks like underneath uh, let's see what else that's about it oh so there's here's the adjustments for the the height so you just pull it out and then raise it up and it it works on both wheels it raises both wheels and the two in the front 
um, well it raises both wheels, this one in the front and then one in the back. We're raising the rear wheels. So anyway, I do uh, actually really like this. It's, um, you know, who knows what the reliability is going to be, but um, it should be fine as long as you take care of it like anything. But uh, yeah, it, it cuts really well, and like I said, I'm really impressed with the bagging. Um, even really wet grass and um, fuel usage also was a really uh, highlight for me because uh, it didn't seem like it used hardly any fuel at all. Um, filling up a couple bags on these hills. So that is it. I believe this one was new, new model for errands in 2022 or so. I don't think they were in the um, walk behind mower business for a while and then uh, this either came out in 2022 or 2023 it's april 23 right now april of 2023 um, but um, it is a fairly recent model so this is a newer newer model that hasn't been out very long all right well help. hopefully that was helpful it's just an overview of what this looks like in a few few uh, bits of information you may not hear from other people about rear discharging and so on. Right, thanks for watching.